Hello and full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries in regards to one of the biggest mysteries coming out of the James Webb Space Telescope. The mystery we've previously discussed in a lot of other videos, right there in the description, that currently scientists refer to as the Little Red Dots. Bizarre, unexplained formations discovered by the James Webb, and only visible to the James Webb, that as the name implies, basically resemble tiny red dots. And ever since the first observations, and since the first analysis, they basically became one of the main mysteries. Because obviously we have absolutely no idea what we're actually looking at. Ok, we have some ideas that we're going to be discussing today, but it's still not super clear. And we've actually discussed one of these objects extremely recently, because something strange was discovered inside of one that was previously never seen before. In this case we're talking about a very specific type of emissions, that should be technically impossible. Once again, the link for this should be in the description. But here's what we know about them so far, and what science has discovered in the last couple of years. First of all, even though they do appear in a lot of different imagery from the James Webb, they were only officially reported and described in March of 2024, essentially making them a new type of an object that was never before seen anywhere. And one of the main reasons they were so mysterious is of course because only the James Webb Space Telescope seemed to be able to see them. In other words, they were only visible to very powerful infrared telescopes. And what's really surprising here is that they seem to have very flat infrared spectrum. Or basically their infrared emissions were somewhat similar to each other and did not exhibit a lot of flares or a lot of variability. Moreover, there was no detection of X-rays or any other powerful radiation and most importantly, there were no flares of any sorts. Which is of course what we usually expect from a typical supermassive black hole or from a typical AGN, active galactic nucleus. And so these were literally like tiny red lights everywhere that didn't seem to change much and seemed to produce the same color. Moreover, they all seem to exist around the same period of time. So far all of them have been detected between 0.6 to 1.6 billion years after the Big Bang, with the youngest ones existing 12.2 billion years ago. But the majority seem to be visible about 600 million years following the Big Bang, and their numbers seem to disappear over time. Now, as far as I know, as of 2025, approximately 340 such objects have been officially confirmed, but there are probably a lot more hiding in the data. But because some of the initial observations did not reveal anything specific about these objects, this lack of data basically made it impossible to try to understand what we're looking at. So are these just tiny galaxies, bizarre black holes, compact collections of stars, or some strange energy we've never seen before? Or is this something unique to the early universe that just cannot exist anymore for some unknown reasons? But the first clues started to come out just based on the observations of the color, because they're all red, and here we're talking about a very specific red, this basically implied a lot of gas and dust surrounding something very powerful and something very massive. We actually see something very similar in a lot of different dust-obscured galaxies, especially galaxies referred to as hot dogs, hot dust-obscured galaxies, but usually not to the same extent and definitely not as bright. With some of the first pieces of evidence suggesting that this is something that contains a lot of dust. But some of the recent observations started to reveal something else that's very important. This obviously contained a lot of hydrogen gas, but here the observations revealed that the Balmer lines, or the lines produced by emission of hydrogen, were not sharp and thin as you see them right here, but were instead much, much wider, or basically contained very broad Balmer emission lines. Now, not all objects contain this, but at least 80% did. And this was a telltale sign that there is a lot of extremely fast-moving hydrogen that seemed to be circulating something in the center. And here, based on the thickness of this emission line, it became possible to calculate the average speed. Basically, this is actually showing us the redshift and the blue shift of the line, with the implication being that this gas orbits around something central at over 1000 km per second, which really only had one explanation, a supermassive black hole. And this was a telltale sign that whatever is happening here seems to involve black hole accretion. And moreover, because things were spinning so fast, it very likely involved a black hole that was also spinning fast and was very likely growing extremely rapidly. But if these were black holes, there was still basically this unanswered question. How come we don't actually see any flares? How come there are no X-ray emissions? And why is the infrared spectrum so flat and doesn't change in brightness at all? None of this is actually expected of an active black hole, and in most cases all other black holes 
are usually extremely unpredictable and produce tons of different emissions. Moreover, why do we only see these objects so far away? And why is it that nothing like this is seen closer to us? Or at least these were questions and assumptions from a few months back, based on some of the previous observations. Actually here the observations also suggested that these are really compact objects, potentially 2% the radius of the Milky Way, or basically no larger than 500 light years across, but also objects that potentially contain ultra-massive black holes, possibly hundreds of millions or even billions of solar masses in mass already. And that of course created a new problem. How is that even possible if the universe just began? We don't expect black holes to grow so fast, so quickly, following the Big Bang. So basically here we had some solutions, but also new problems. And well, when it comes to trying to answer the question of why we don't see these objects much closer to us, we potentially have an answer from something that was discovered not so long ago. And well, here we're talking about the objects you see right here. These were discovered by citizen scientists, and these are known as green peas. Very bizarre, very unusual objects, but this time, instead of being red, they're actually green in color, but do possess extremely similar properties and seem to exist much closer to us. And once again, the video in the description talks about this discovery more as well. And so in essence, it's quite likely that green peas and little red dots are very likely related. Or basically, the black hole that seems to contain a lot of gas and a lot of dust eventually becomes slightly bluer as a lot of this gas and dust disappears over time with some of these transition stages being visible as these green pea galaxies. But in this recent study, we potentially have some additional answers that actually finally explain some of the other unusual discrepancies, such as how these black holes can be so massive and why we don't actually see a lot of variation in terms of infrared emissions, or basically any other emissions either. With the explanation in this case, once again focusing on one specific little red dot, with this one existing when the universe was about 660 million years old. And well, in essence, this study essentially confirms that these are indeed super unique objects and definitely nothing like we've ever imagined and technically qualify as their own objects and not just active galactic nuclei. With the overall explanation from the study suggesting that these are indeed massive black holes, but in this case inside extremely dense cocoons of gas that in terms of density is actually super similar to the upper atmosphere of a typical star. And the best way to imagine this is to basically literally imagine a red giant star, such as for example Betelgeuse, but in this case a star with a radius of about 40 astronomical units, but in the center of this object there is a really massive black hole that's actively feeding and is also releasing huge amounts of energy from its accretion disk, which illuminates all of the gas around it and makes all of this gas and dust glow extremely brightly. So here we're basically seeing all of this gas and all of this dust glow as a result of the central black hole emitting huge amounts of energy. And so in essence these might be supermassive black holes surrounded by very dense gas, potentially representing progenitors of some of the earliest galaxies and related to a process that seemed to be very common in the early universe. But definitely not something anyone expected or anyone predicted because a lot of different models and computer simulations never actually created anything like this or even anything remotely similar to this, implying that there is something we're missing from the galactic evolutionary models. And so our assumption that we understand what the early galaxies might have been like is obviously incorrect. And so basically this seems to be a really large bowl of gas, as you can see from this image, that seems to surround a super powerful accretion disk with a very powerful black hole voraciously eating a lot of matter, very likely at its limit. We usually call this the Eddington limit, with the black hole itself containing a very hot and a very powerful disk that's responsible for all of this brightness and all of this energy. But I guess even more intriguingly, this is just a small part of the actual galaxy itself. And so even though from our point of view this resembles a little red dot, there seems to be an actual galaxy around it that's just invisible as a result of this super bright object. And so the researchers in this study now refer to this as the black hole star, and the radiation from this black hole star seems to dominate all of the other light coming from the galaxy, basically making everything else completely invisible, even though it's very likely there. But there's one more important discovery in this study that clarifies some of the previous confusion. In previous studies, this was assumed to be an overmassive black hole, possibly up to a billion solar masses in mass. This doesn't seem to be the case. These new calculations suggest that this is possibly 100,000 to maybe 10 million solar masses maximum, or essentially at least 100 times less massive 
than previously assumed. And that is actually great news, because it doesn't mean that we need any special explanations for how these black holes are even possible, because black holes of that mass are technically predicted to exist in modern cosmology. Moreover, this seems to represent a population of rapidly growing black holes, and black holes growing ridiculously fast, potentially answering how supermassive black holes manage to get so big in certain galaxies. But the main reason we don't see anything else here, and the main reason there are no X-rays and no variations of light, is really because of this super dense cocoon of gas. It seems to dominate the optical spectrum, and it basically seems to be this super super bright glowing gas resembling a massive star that's very likely brighter and more powerful than anything else at that period of time. And so basically because it's so bright and so ridiculously powerful, it seems to suppress everything else. And right now this is the preferred explanation based on a lot of different studies, but it's not the only explanation and there are obviously some alternative propositions. For example, this could still be a black hole ripping apart huge amounts of stars, basically causing an extremely massive tidal disruption event that was potentially only possible in the early universe. And because here some of the observations do actually resemble a tidal disruption event, technically this is still a possibility. Alternatively, this could also be a collection of extremely bright, very massive stars, or basically represent 10 billion solar masses of stars in a very small area all around each other possibly serving as a precursor for some of the global clusters or centers of various galaxies. But here it's not clear why these stars are basically not colliding and destroying each other, or why it's even possible, with scientists now believing that if we ever find additional calcium lines or calcium emission lines here, this might imply that this is indeed stars and not black holes after all. But right now, because these observations have not actually discovered anything like this yet, and because we only see hydrogen, the star explanation does not really make sense. And so, I guess in conclusion, we seem to have discovered a completely new object. A massive black hole surrounded by a super thick cocoon of gas, making the whole object resemble a massive, enormous star. A star so bright, you can actually see it from approximately 30 billion light years away from planet Earth. And a star that seems to resemble an enormous giant Betelgeuse. And because they seem to be in many locations everywhere, this was potentially an extremely common phenomenon. But most importantly, because these recent explanations don't break any major rules and do not require any additional physics trying to explain anything else, currently this is actually the best possible explanation. But naturally, in the next few months, we might have to come back and discuss this more, assuming there are additional discoveries or something else is found that seems to challenge these propositions. And so until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.